Hi, this is Gandalf from Nielsen Dynasty, and that's Ginger from Nielsen Dynasty, and that's Dixie. Say hello, Dixie, from Nielsen Dynasty. But I am Neil. I am Nielsen Dynasty. And as a uh, typical, get chastised and berated and made fun of for two years ago, saying, yeah, we're going to be asteroid mining within a couple of years, guys. We're going to be asteroid mining within a couple of years, guys. We're going to be asteroid mining within a couple of years, guys. Neil, you're crazy. Neil, you're crazy. Anyhow, I'm, I'm ranting again. Let me get back to, to the beginning. Hi, I'm Neil Hassan Dynasty. Please like, share, and subscribe. Be kind, helpful, and grateful because it's better than being a jerk. And buy some silver and some platinum. Platinum is better purchase than silver, in my opinion. I am a financial expert on Mars, planet Mars. Got my office there. Deal with a couple of plutoniums, a couple of people from Uranus. You know, I haven't, I, I don't do human financing because it's manipulated big time. But, uh, you know, I do extraterrestrial financing. So I do extraterrestrial financing. And that's why people think I'm crazy because they don't know the future. They think the future's here on Earth with 7 billion, 10 billion, 20 billion people. And we're all going to be here on Earth. Yeah, right. This dude here. Resource talks, mining the moon to lift off within 10 years, they say, huh? They're lying. It's going to be sooner. Trust me. The moon to lift off. Good joke, me. So who wrote it? Me? Mining the moon to lift off within 10 years, says NASA. So this article should fit right into what I've been talking about asking about in recent weeks, you know, stuff about the deep sea mining, asteroid mining type of pipe dream. Now, this week, it's NASA. NASA said that they're going to be sending the first woman and the first person of color to the moon, which is a great thing. But the idea is basically to drill the moon literally this year. They want to drill the moon this year to quantify whatever resources there, there might be on the moon. They're hoping to be on the moon so that they can have the private sector fund a potential mining venture on the literal move, because obviously there's not enough risk to fund a mining venture in Peru or Ecuador. We want to make it a little bit more risky and fund it on the move. And so that's the state of the market that we're in right now. Okay. That gentleman obviously needs his head, head examined because there's no geopolitical crap going on in the moon. There's no coups. There's no drug dealing. There's none of that stuff going on in the moon like there is in Peru, Ecuador, and all these other places you just mentioned. So his mindset is totally off when it comes to financing that you can take to the bank he just said it oh well it's harder to mine on the moon it's easier to mine in fucking peru no it's not peru's government changes their geopolitical stance changes their taxes change the moon unless we run across some martians here real quick ain't nothing up there no one to stop you from doing crap hey environmentalists nothing Hey, uh, territorial whatever. Hey, America landed on the moon. It belongs to America. We chose to give it to the world or whatever we chose to do with it to allow other people to... We have the right to mine that son bitch, and we're going to. And it's going to be cheap and easy. A lot easier than mining in, in, in uh, under the ocean, which I already did a report on, were 17 companies. See, now back when uh, the Great Depression, when they wanted to build the Hoover Dam, not one company was big enough to do it. They had to get six companies together, and they called... They, they, formed and called themselves the six companies company to build this huge ass building project called the Hoover Dam. Well, two, three mile mining under the sea is a lot harder. So they had to get 16, 17 companies together to make a large enough size of a company to be able to handle undersea mining. And I did a report on this as well. They've already found 5,000 new species and they had to stop because of all the new species they found. Uh, so undersea mining is off. One great thing about the moon is there's no species. There's no flowers. There's no black spotted newt, no green red toed third legged frogs. There's none of that stuff. So right off the bat, it's going to be easier to mine on the moon because I don't think Nancy Pansy or Freddie Frick is going to be out there protesting without a, a space suit and a couple million dollars to get up there to protest. So it knocks out all the protests right off the bat. The only people you got to deal with is back here on Earth is, and that's logistics. Logistics is easy to handle comparatively to going into a country and dealing with indigenous people who 
didn't agree to what their government agreed to. So you instantly have problems. And this guy needs to fucking wake up to reality, in my opinion. But he does bring up a good point about mining on the moon. In terms of CapEx, it's probably nothing to worry about, right? They just want to build a moon orbiting station, which is, well, I guess it's in space, isn't it? And then from that station, they would take trips to the moon, the literal moon again, and build the mine there. They, um, I mean, they have no idea. I mean, we have no idea what's really up there. We, you don't, you don't know before you don't know it before you drill it. But it's good that we have a plan about how we're going to be mining this thing, and they're probably already raising some money or, or using some government money for it. Um, and the um, this is a quote: the large excavation activities, <laughs> unquote, are scheduled to begin in 2032. So we cannot find, define, and build a decent copper mine by then on Earth. We cannot even build a mine in the Yukon in that time, but we'll be mining the moon in nine years. This guy, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm sorry I brought him to this report, Resource Talks. Mr. Resource Talks, get your head out your butt. Is there any politics going on in the moon? Is there any politics? Is there any human slavery? Is there any of this other stuff? No, no, no. It's a, it's a clean slate for mining. Not only that, it's already a proven fact, Mr. Uh, Resource Talks. Sorry for going on this rant, people. There is more platinum located on the moon than there is on the Earth. That in and of itself makes it valuable and worthwhile to go for. Uh, China discovered H3, hydrogen 3, which is needed for rocket fuel. It's on the moon. So all we need to do, and I did a report on this already, is build a, a Phillips 66 station, pull a Willie Nelson, manufacture our own fuel at the gas station on the moon so that way you don't have to worry about uh elon musk shit flying back down and landing and stuff you just keep going you keep the same rocket you refill it and you go to the next station you refill it you go to the next station that's how we did cars and that's how we got across our little country from one end to the other same thing's gonna happen in space wake up mr resource talks there is no politics up there and as far as copper goes, the amount of copper on the earth is finite. And most of it is, is child slave labor. So don't talk about building no new copper mines. Refine the ones you have and make them work right. And the price of copper will shoot through the roof. And it will make it more feasible to go to the moon because you stopped child slave labor. Because that's how we're getting copper so cheap. So, yeah, it'll be a good idea to go to the moon. This guy, I, I need to give him a call and wake him up. But... He is bringing a report about mining on the moon and what NASA says on it. He's just got somewhat of a messed up thought process, in my opinion, of, of explanations he's given. That's why I have to stop and set him straight, even though he's not here. Uh, I will be emailing him to let him know he is way off track and give him the valid talking points and facts behind what I say, which he hasn't done enough research on. I apologize, but I will remain skeptical. And, and this is the point where I want to say not with my money. But when I spoke to Rick Rowe about it, he actually made a good point that it's going to be with my money, whether I like it or not. So let's listen to Rick again. There's only two explanations. Um, only governments or people who can loot governments uh, are able to conjure up a net present value in something like sending a drilling rig to the moon. Okay. Right off the bat, he is misleading you, but he doesn't really know it because apparently he's uninformed too. I am already at odds with Rick Rule over Platinum. But yeah, no, he's right. It costs a lot to get something and ship it up there. Elon Musk has made it a lot cheaper. But what Rick Rule has neglected to think about is the new worldwide global law that says if you stick a beacon on it, you own it. That's why NASA and SpaceX are sending the uh, thing out there, that quadrillion dollar asteroid, because it's called a leverage. Once you prove you own it, a rock in outer space is a lot safer from the Al Capones and the Jesse Jameses that'll rob banks and the politicians that'll rob banks here in America and in China and in Russia, all around the world, they rob banks. You can't rob a bank if it's in outer space. You can leverage it and you take that money after your beacon lands on it and you can get one you can get a beacon built for about fifty thousand dollars and launched for about three hundred thousand dollars another two hundred thousand dollars for other equipment so less than a million dollars you can get a beacon and in seven years you'll own a couple trillion dollar rock you can leverage that rock to get the money necessary to go into outer space 
as a businessman, Rick Roll should understand that leverage. I've heard him say that word several times. Apply that to space. Uh, why would you change the rules of money and business just because you're going to upper atmosphere, out of out out of the atmosphere? That's it's a foolish thing. I, I'm starting to be more at odds with Rick Rule than I was before. I just heard him say this. The only reason I guess that a, an intelligent government official might even consider that it be, is because that government official is aware of the obstruction that their own institution puts in place to exploiting resources on Earth. Uh, at the same time... See, now greed is coming out in this man. The reason why the rules are different in space and on Earth it's because on Earth, we have the black spotted newt, the salmon, the eagle, and all these other species that I mentioned just earlier in this show that I've recorded. And this gentleman here, Mr. Rick Rule, seems to think that we should just negate that, forget all the environmental things, and compare apples to, to grapefruit and call them the same. It is going to be so much cheaper once we get the infrastructure in it set up on the moon and i think there needs to be a refinery set up on the moon not a mine but i guess you could do a mine too because asteroid mining is where it's going to be at for the future people the moon's got finite resources as well the kuiper belt has all the resources we need for the trillion years and that's where the mining is going to be haven't you guys ever seen what's that movie uh the mandalorian yeah i think in season three he drove by a couple asteroid mining as a matter of fact isn't uh, one of the cities on the Mandalorian expanding because uh, of asteroid mining? So even our fiction, they have asteroid mining because people realize the reality of it. It's going to happen because our rock's going to run out of shit. We have life forms we have to watch out for and not extinguish their existence on our planet going after resources, Mr. Rick Rule. That's why it's easier and cheaper to mine in space because environmentalists don't sue you. The the new black spotted newt won't sue you. No one can sue you. All you got to do is be smart enough to put your money into something that'll get you that cash in 10 years. That's investing. It's not crypto. You're not going to make $50 billion trillion in two seconds and then lose twice as much in four seconds and be bankrupt like half the people out there who deal with crypto. It's different. I, I'm really starting to get at odds with recruit. And they see the need to send a drill rig to the moon. They take a deposit like Resolution, the copper deposit in Arizona, which is a, a, over a billion tons of one and a half percent copper, three times the average mine grade worldwide. And they tie it up in a regulatory morass for 25 years. See, now Rick Rule seems to think that we have governments on the moon. That'll do the same regulatory crap. No, we do not. The commonality about asteroid and space mining for every country on the world is you're not destroying the world. You're, 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 you're mining a rock that has no life on it. So there is no regulation. Who cares about carbon on an atmosphere that there's no, on a rock that has no atmosphere? Who cares about excess lead deposits? Because that's what you're mining anyhow, along with platinum and zinc and and, 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 and therillium and rhodidium and everything else that's out there. But there's no humans to regulate it, Mr. Rick Rule. You obviously don't think much so about perhaps our space. if you're a government official and, and you understand the treasonous nature of what it is that you do, you think that the net present value of something that isn't going to work for 100 years is higher than the net present value of something that you're going to obfuscate right now. See, he's changing. He's, he's, he's leading you down a road, a certain pathway of thought. And that's dangerous. I'm not going to show you guys the rest of this. Mr. Rick Rule and I, if he's at the Silver Symposium, we're going to have a conversation. It's going to be a conversation. I don't, I don't argue with people who need to be uh, enlightened. Have a good day.